Welcome to Storytelling 101. Let's jump right in. I'm your host today, Melissa Balmer. For those of you who don't know me or don't know me as well as others do, I am the founder of petalove.org, where I create storytelling tools, tips, and coloring pages to help you grow more active, sustainable, and mindful mobility. I also work with both individuals and organizations, coaching them to become more compelling and engaging storytellers, whether they are selling products and services or policies. Storytelling is for all of the kinds of work that we do. So this presentation is short. It's just about 18 minutes long, maybe a little bit shorter, and that will give us even more time for your questions, at least 12 minutes for your questions at the end. So what I want you to do as we go along is either jot down your questions as they come up or text them to me because I will take them live at the end, but I want to keep to our timeline because I know everybody is really busy. So we will only get to the questions at the end, but I want to make sure that I don't miss them. I know everybody is super busy, but I want to ask if you can try not to do much too much multitasking. I know you're tempted to check emails and texts, and some of you have to be doing some other work while you're listening. But if you can really take the time to not multitask, you not only absorb the information better that I'm sharing with you today and that I'll, the recording that I'll share with you later afterwards, but also you're gonna ask better questions. And if you ask better questions, that'll not only help you, but it will be a gift to the rest of us as well. So something to consider as we move forward. Storytelling is one of the most powerful tools you can use in your communications today. It really is, but why is this so? It turns out that humans learn through storytelling. Writer and cultural anthropologist Catherine Bateson summed it up beautifully. The species thinks in metaphors and learns through stories. This is one of the most important things I want you to think about and remember today. Stories are how we humans make sense of things. Facts don't change hearts and minds. Our brains are wired for storytelling. It's in our DNA, and we can't remember facts and data well. Only stories. So I want you to consider this. In the past 60 years or so, for every big, huge, positive cultural shift we've made successfully, the civil rights movement, women's rights, gay rights, and more. There's been popular storytelling in books, which of course we've had for hundreds of years, but it was really television and movies as well that stepped forward, not only to support these movements, but to help them become normal behavior to much, much broader audiences. To better understand the powerful science behind storytelling, I have a short, sweet video that I share on YouTube, and it's at the end of this in the resources. And that breaks down more of the science, but we're not gonna focus on science today. We're gonna focus on step-by-step step how you can become a better storyteller. So today what we're going to learn is what a good story is, how to craft them, how to discover and develop the right stories for the work that you're doing, and then use them in your daily communications. And these will really transform the work that you're doing. It will help bring you new customers. It will make your fans and followers feel more engaged. It will help your return on investment. I cannot tell you how valuable telling is. It is really extraordinary. And here is the most important thing that I want you to take away from today. Anyone of any age and any background, including introverts, can become storytelling superheroes. It's a learned skill. You absolutely can do this. So what is a story? And most especially, what is a good story? They have three key elements. Good stories always entertain, they always have a meaning, and they always have structure. It's very specific. 
people pay much better attention when they're entertained. Your entertainment doesn't have to always be good news, but it does need to be compelling. It's that we're a species that's addicted to drama. Even if you're not watching Game of Thrones right now, you know that much of the world is. So here's a delightful storyteller that I want to introduce you to. Jules Walker, also known as the popular bike blogger Lady Velo, hadn't been on a bike in 10 years when she was encouraged by her boyfriend to buy a beautiful Pashley bicycle. From the very beginning, she started a blog about her adventures in the English cycling scene. The blog took off because of her breezy, fun, interesting style of writing and included, as you can see here, her fantastic eye for style. Never underestimate the power of style for visual storytelling, especially in social media. On May 23rd, just about a week from now, her new book comes out, and it includes the story of how bicycling has helped her deal with depression. I know it's going to be a great success, and now we're going to delve into one of the reasons why. Good stories have meaning. Good stories illuminate ideas and issues that otherwise people find very challenging to understand. And the most interesting stories include personal struggle and overcoming, just like Jules overcoming depression or dealing better with depression because of bicycling. Now I'm going to tell you an even more dramatic story. 16-year-old Greta Thunberg is a young woman from Sweden who has launched a worldwide movement in just a year of school taking Fridays off to strike for climate change. Greta's own personal struggle and overcoming is that she suffered a huge depression at the age of 11 when she realized that climate change is very real and, frankly, not much effectively is being done to combat it. She was so depressed she lost 40 pounds and stunted her own growth. She didn't start to recover until she decided to do something about it. She convinced her parents, as well as herself, to become vegans and her mother, who was a traveling opera star, to stop flying in planes. The family only travels now by train. And starting actually less than a year ago, last August, inspired by civil rights activists here in the United States, she began to take Fridays off to strike out its own parliament for climate justice. The media quickly picked up on her story and it traveled like wildfire around the world. And get this, she is a self-described introvert with Asperger's. Anyone can become a storytelling superhero. Now, in 125 countries, 2,000 cities, a million youth and others are joining her in her weekly Friday climate strikes. When I first shared this story a couple of months ago, it was then in the hundreds of thousands. That's the power of a truly compelling story and a gifted storyteller. Anyone can learn to be a great storyteller. Anyone can become a storytelling superhero. But you have to make sure that your stories have structure. All stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end. If they don't, they're simply not stories. They're just an anecdote, and they're not as powerful. Stories follow a classic narrative plot, a narrative arc. This simply means the structure of the plot how things unfold in the timeline, and the stories that we humans find most interesting, and this is for thousands of years, follow a simple pattern that I'm going to share with you. And often, they're shaped like a triangle. So let's take a look. First, we start with the exposition, setting the scene. Often, this tells us of a normal that gets disturbed, but not always. Sometimes things begin bad with a longing for something better. Greta Thunberg is a young woman growing up middle class in Sweden, but she's the sort nobody notices. 
she sits at the back of the class. Next, we have the rising action, or what's known as an inciting incident. This is the hook you use to really capture your audience's attention. Something happens to challenge the hero. In Greta's case, she learns that climate change is real and becomes very depressed. Next, you have the climax, which is also known as the turning point. This does three things for your story. It's the height of its action, it answer, answers your story's biggest questions, and it marks the beginning of your descent into resolution. Greta begins to overcome her depression by leaving school on Fridays to strike outside of her parliament for climate justice. Both traditional and social media share her story and it goes around the world. Next, we have what's known as falling action. This is when you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but at least one more twist is in the road that brings the hero a challenge. Leading scientists agree last year, at the end of the year, that we only really have about 11 years to cool down our planet's temperature or face very dire consequences. Greta knows the clock for her climate action is ticking. And finally, we have the solution. It doesn't have to be a happily ever after ending, but it needs to be an ending that wraps it up for today. It has a million school children from around the world joining her call to climate justice. Thousands are going on protests and letting their government think they want something different. Journalists and world leaders are paying attention, and Greta is now being asked to tour around Europe and give presentations to government who are now finally making serious resolutions about climate justice and action the way they never have before. And when you want to kick it up even a greater notch, as we've seen in Greta's example, stories have purpose and the surprising twists and aha moments. Remember, stories are how we humans make sense of things. The greatest storytellers use their stories to open our hearts and minds to ways of thinking and new ways of being. In her best-selling trilogy of books, The Hunger Games, also made into blockbuster movies, author Suzanne Collins wanted to open hearts and minds to the horrible effect of violence from war on children and youth. And her surprising twist? It's the girl who's the action hero. It's the girl who can carefully well wield the bow and arrow. In a more classic version, the original Star Wars movies had two big twists. Luke and Leia were actually brother and sister, and the villain, Darth Vader, is their father. To keep the momentum going for your own stories, the place to put your aha moments and your surprising plot twists are in the climax and the falling action. But how do you find the right stories? The stories that you need to be sharing right now are actually right under your nose. They're your own stories, the clients you serve, your network, your fans and followers, and your board of directors. Everyone has at least one great personal story about why they're passionate about active transportation, bicycling, walking, sustainable living, and more. And they can all be told in truly compelling ways. Your most important job is to find the stories that are most relevant to the programs, policies, services, and products you're promoting right now. Your stories need to illustrate the data and the products to make them relatable. Instead of simply sharing that your program or policies are increasing biking in a particular portion of a city or biking and walking to school, you need to share of specific individuals and how doing this positive thing is transforming their lives. Then you take this story and you map it to the narrative arc to make it 
truly compelling and remarkable. So let me share with you a better example and case study of what I'm talking about. What's often missing from our stories for active mobility and sustainability is the that's in it for me angle that allows people to insert themselves in your story and change their behavior. If I was running a safe routes to school program right now or any program focused on getting children and adults to walk, bike, and take more public transit, I'd share stories like this one that I found just yesterday on Twitter from CNN about how this Ohio teenager, Michael Watson, has lost 115 pounds in the past couple of years by walking every day to school and watching his diet, all while, get this, working at a fast food restaurant after school. People have a hard time with big sweeping ideas and issues. 40,000 traffic deaths a year from car crashes in the United States. Our planet becoming so hot, it might well kill off most of the plants and animals. These things might be true, but it doesn't mean people will pay attention to them because they get overwhelmed and feel powerless. They put their heads in the sand. What instead? Popular health and well-being gurus, great storytellers like Deepak Chopra, know better than client scientists and mobility activists, is how to tell stories that show clearly what's in it for me. What's in it for me if I make this behavior change? How will I look and feel better and save money? And how will this do the same for my family? Just this morning, this was shared on Twitter. The story of People Walker. Chuck McCarthy in Los Angeles is taking people on personal walking tours of their own neighborhoods. He's getting people out walking and they're starting to feel great because guess what traffic does to people? Living in our cars does to people. It not only makes us healthy, it makes us lonely and depressed. Car companies have done a brilliant job on selling the public on cars and SUVs as safety vehicles, freedom vehicles, and status vehicles. We have to tell the stories that illustrate they're exactly the opposite. But in order to do this successfully, we have to bring forward personal stories of transformation, stories of people who are revolutionizing their health and the health and well-being of their families by biking, walking, public transit, and other truly sustainable ways of living. So once you have these stories and you've developed them, what the heck do you do with them? You layer them into your presentations and communications, just like a cake. You keep them very short, just like I've done in today's presentation. And you share them via emails, blogs, social media, your talks, videos, conversations, interviews, and more. A very good rule of thumb is to have very short three to five minute stories for live talks and conversations, and of course on the phone, a few paragraphs, three to five for a blog, one to three paragraphs for a print or email newsletter, and a few sentences for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you can do a little bit more. But if you're going to be doing it frequently, even that should be kept short and sweet. So as I close my part of the presentation and get ready for your questions, I want you to remember these three important things. Stories are how humans make sense of the world. They are absolutely crucial to any successful communications that you will be doing. It doesn't matter how scientific stories matter because data doesn't change hearts and minds, only stories do. You've got to use stories when you're sharing data to make it understandable, no matter how smart you think your audience is. And finally, you can become a storytelling superhero by using the tools that I've shared here today and more of them that I share on petallove.org. 
So now I am ready for your questions. So if you want to go ahead and unmute yourselves, I would love to get this started. And we have actually a question from Laura Villone that I'm going to answer. But first, I want to see if anything sparked you while I was talking. Uh, Long, if you took any notes, if you have anything that you want to share. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead with Laura's question because it was actually a great question, and that will give you guys time to look through notes or or put any questions together. So Laura is with Alizetti Bikes of Montreal, which is a new electric bike that's coming on the market. And she her question is this, being new to content marketing, coming from the point of view of a biking business and product, I'm struggling with finding a balance between promoting the product and solving the problem of presenting the aha moment through storytelling. Like sometimes I cringe because I feel like it starts off well and then it turns into an as advertisement. So then I freeze and my question is, where is that line? How do I not cross it but get the message across? I dislike it when I see so much advertising or read advertorials and you get to the end and it's, oh, here's what they want me to buy. How do you use your voice to show your point of view but without sounding holier than thou? It's really a great question. And here's what I would say. Separate your storytelling from your promotions. In today's modern marketing success, there's an 80-20 split. That is 80% of your information that you share on social media needs to be simply useful and valuable. Only 20% of it, percent of it needs to be prom absolute promotional. So what you want to do with your storytelling, and you shared a great uh, tweet yesterday, Laura, that was a perfect example of this. You just want to share your stories as something valuable. You don't have to put in the part of C and Alizetti Bikes are transforming your lives today. Just use the storytelling in your email newsletters and your tweets as the stories. Yes, the person is probably riding one of your bikes, and it can say that they're riding one of your bikes, and it can say clearly that it's one of your customers, but just tell the story. Don't try to have some brilliant kind of advertorial copy in there as well, because it's not going to work. Now, of course, when you're doing email newsletters and other things, you want to be clear that you are selling a product. And so after the story in a, another segment, you can have a, a picture of one of your brand new products. You can have kind of call to action that they can uh, click there to get a percentage off or to get a free gift or something like that. But really keep the storytelling clear and clear from trying to be too promotional. And this works the same with whether you have a policy or a program. Let the story of the person whose life has been transformed stand on its own. Don't try to insert your brilliant pro policy in with it, if that makes sense, because you'll just muddy the water. Keep things clear and separated. And that's easy to do in an email newsletter. It's easy to do in blog posts. It's easy to do in social media. But again, you are going to get much better results, and people are going to see you as an authentic voice for active living and active transportation if you 80% of the time, you're just selling clear, clean, useful information. Okay, so what other questions do you guys have for me today? We're just about out of time, but I want to make sure if you have any other live questions that you want answered today, I can do that. I'm happy to do that. Or you can also email me after this. Uh, because it might not occur to you until later what your questions are. And remember, I am going to be sharing the recording with you next week, and I'm on, going to also share with you a worksheet of using the pyramid 
and the classic narrative arc to start taking your own stories and stories of your fans and followers, stories of your network, your colleagues, and breaking them down. And you can share these worksheets with your teams. Sophie, you can share them with your team and uh, aha moment. Okay, so Sophie, an aha moment is made famous by uh, Oprah Winfrey. And an aha moment is when you see the world anew and you have aha moment stories in the people that are riding the bikes around Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles, where you guys are handling the bike share, where they're seeing their world anew, which is that a bike is often a faster form of transportation in a congested city. Um, they are finding that they feel better because they're taking the bikes out and riding at lunchtime. They're riding to lunch with their friends. They feel more connected to the city. They are seeing uh, interesting things. They're seeing story. They're seeing shops and services that they didn't even know existed or that when they're driving by in a car, they couldn't, they were moving too fast and they had time to stop or there wasn't any parking. Uh, there are people that are um, transforming their health. They're, their blood pressure is being lowered, they're losing weight, they're feeling better, they're dealing better with anxiety and depression. So those are the kind of aha moments that you're looking for in the kinds of stories that you would be sharing. So here's a question from Anthony. Do you have guidance in making the story relatable to the audience? Would a story where the central character reflects the audience demographic be more effective? Not necessarily, Anthony, because when you start out, you're you might not have enough stories that will exactly reflect every audience. So what you're looking for is the personal transformation, the story of struggle and overcoming. It is a good idea if you can to have stories of people that reflect your audience, absolutely. But don't get discouraged and think you have to be perfect before you get out of the gate because here's an interesting thing that's gonna happen. When you share, share stories of people like old white men in Lycra that are actually truly personally engaging and show that person's humanity and his uh, struggle and overcoming, you can really affect your audience in deep ways and create greater understanding. Um, we had a storytelling workshop that I hosted for the California Bicycle Coalition when I was their media director. And we worked in teams. And the person that was selected to tell the story from one of the teams was a gentleman who is, is now retired, but he was a an engineer. And people assumed he was a particular type of person and, and his story was very, very different. His story was that he was the bike guy at his planning firm because when he started with them, he was the youngest guy on the team and he was the low man on the totem pole. And they said, you know what, this biking, this bike friendly thing and bike friendly cities is gonna be important to our bottom line. If you have a bike in the garage, you're gonna become our bike guy. And he did have a bike in the garage and he picked it up and he started riding again. Well, Stefan Vance is now known all over as, as a dapper bespoke guy who goes everywhere with his folding up Brompton. But 25 years ago, that wasn't the case. So look to, especially your board of directors for stories that you can tell about them that are going to build bridges to diverse audiences. Does that make sense? So I want to let everybody know as we close today that I do have another webinar coming up in a couple of weeks, which is Savvy Storytelling for Social Media, and I'd love you all to join me, and I will share more details about that. And I also want to share with you quickly here resources that you can see who I was talking about today, including Jules Walker and Greta Thunberg and the Ohio team that lost 150 pounds, or excuse me, 115 pounds, and the gentleman who has started a walking business around Los Angeles. There's also the link here for my Why Storytelling, which is a short three-minute video that delves into the science of storytelling 
And this is great for Anthony, your team and others who are super analytical, doing great jobs with data, but you've got to become more um, personally engaging and mostly engaging to get out there to broader audiences. So that is our presentation for today. I am so excited that you guys all joined me. Again, this is a superb group of people. I am going to uh, stop my recording now, but I'd love it if you guys would connect if you'd like to, because again, you guys are on the leading edge of being curious about storytelling and being truly compelling storytellers and storytelling superheroes. And you're all working on really interesting projects, not only from around the United States, but uh, Laura in Montreal, Canada. So thank you again. And I look forward to connecting with you soon. And I will leave this open for about 10 minutes so that you can connect if you'd like to. Thank you. And again, I will be following up directly with you in email.